Hey everyone, uh, I've been living in Leuven in Belgium for around four and a half weeks now, so I figured it's high time for me to make a video about my life in Leuven, so enjoy! Leuven is a small university town located around 25 kilometers just east of Brussels. The university in Leuven was established back in 1425, which makes it one of the oldest universities in the world. Side note, it wasn't until the 1910s that women were actually allowed to take courses. KU Leuven, as it is known today, stands for Catholic University of Leuven, and it reflects the city's rich history in terms of religion. There are several churches around the city. I actually live in a former monastery, um, and we'll see more of that coming up. But first, let me take you a little around Leuven. This is the train station in Leuven, and when you arrive, this square is the first thing that you'll see. Next, we're going to head into the center by following this main street. Off in the distance, you can see what almost looks like the Disney World castle, but it's not Disney. It's actually several different historic buildings. This is the main square in Leuven, which in Dutch is known as Grote Markt, which means large market. We have the historic town hall with its ornate architecture on the right and some historic buildings as well. This building behind me is the University Hall. Um, I go there to study a lot. They have very good coffee and it reminds me a lot of Duke, specifically West Union, the architecture and everything. Belgium has three official languages, German, French, and Dutch. Leuven is located in the Dutch-speaking region known as Flanders. However, Flanders has its own Flemish dialect of Dutch, which I find to be smoother and less guttural than the Dutch spoken in the Netherlands. This square is known as Udemarkt, which means Old Market, and it actually claims to be the longest bar in the world because of how many bars and restaurants are located along just this one strip. How might you know Leuven? The answer is right there, the Stella Artois Brewery. If you have ever drank a Stella, you have drank a little bit of Leuven. The beer is brewed right here. For those of you who know me, you know I actually really don't like beer, um, but over the past few weeks uh, I've started warming up a little bit, dare I say I've had a few that weren't completely awful, and in fact I actually wanted to go tour the brewery while I was here, but for now it's closed um, because of COVID. Another thing that Belgium is very well known for, fries. Now we are walking towards the university library. This is the building from the front. We have a tower and some ornate architecture and gold markings. Now we are in one of the main reading rooms of the library, lots of wood, but this building actually has a very interesting history. It was bombed during the First World War and then tens of American universities, whose names are now inscribed all over the building, actually donated to rebuild it. Now we're going to climb up to the top of the tower and see what we can see. And a pretty nice view of Leuven. We have the center of the town, St. Peter's Church. I live somewhere in that direction. Um, the square in front of the university library, all of Leuven towards the north, the brewery, and more. I love the atmosphere in Leuven. It's a student city, so there's so many young people up and about, walking around, cycling around, and this atmosphere is actually one of the things that attracted me to Leuven in the first place. I actually visited Leuven last November for around 24 hours. And during that time, I just walked around, explored, saw what there was to see in the campus and the town. Even though the KU Leuven campus is spread out all across town, this is Arenberg Castle, one of the most notable landmarks. Much like Duke, it's a campus in the forest. It clicked for me and I decided to come to Leuven. And I'm really happy that I did. So Leuven is full of energy as the sign reflects. Leuven lebt means Leuven is alive, Leuven lives. A lot of the Belgian students, since Belgium is such a small country, they go home on the weekends, which only leaves us internationals. But this has allowed me to grow much closer with a lot of the international students and has also allowed me to explore neighboring villages around Leuven, especially on Sundays. They're very calm, very peaceful. 
Along with Leuven itself, the town has a lot of these nooks and crannies and these interesting juxtapositions of waterways, walkways, and then brick, houses, buildings, industry, all meshed together. Now we're going to explore St. Peter's Church, which is just off the main square in Leuven. So just inside the entrance, there's this replica of the historic town hall. And we have amazing vaulted ceilings, super high. You can see the brick has been really beautifully restored and painted white, that it actually doesn't even feel like a church. So we're now like in the south of Leuven in kind of this like very well preserved um, historic area of the city. Um, you can see like a lot of brick canals. So this sign indicates where we are right now. Oh, I hope I read that right. Um, <laughs> it literally translates to large begonage. A begonage is a French term that means a group of women who are religious but did not take any vows. They just lived independently. This community was founded in the early 1200s and today is mostly used residentially for students and visiting academics. So oftentimes when I'm just walking down or cycling down the streets in Leuven, if it weren't for the like modern bicycles or the synthetic flower pots, like I would feel as if I was being transported into like medieval times. <laughs> Wouldn't you agree? Also, there are lots of cobblestones in Leuven, not so great for the bike. Unfortunately, they're closing all cafes, bars, restaurants in Belgium for a month. But we're getting one last coffee, and I love coffee in Belgium because it's very smooth and refined and not bitter, and you always get a chocolate or something included with it. So now I am off to explore the Kaisersberg Abbey. It's located on a hill overlooking Leuven. Leuven is actually a surprisingly hilly town. I wasn't expecting that for Belgium. Um, and nothing will compare to the amazing views of Stockholm, but we can at least try. At the Abbey, we have the statue of the Virgin Mary, a huge statue um, overlooking all of Leuven, but it's kind of hard to see behind the trees. The park around the Abbey, however, is very calm, very peaceful, and we have some fall colors starting to arrive. Another one of my favorite spots around Leuven is the Botanical Gardens. It's actually super close to my accommodation. It's located right in the city and it's free entry and they have a ton of different plant species, some that I've actually never seen before. When I am working from home, it's really nice just to be able to pop over here for some fresh air and to see something new. I arrived in Leuven in mid-September and I actually had the chance to visit Brussels just a few days after my arrival. It was my first time in Brussels, but I really liked the atmosphere of the city and the architecture as well. This is like the main square and the historic center of town. You can see lots of like gold uh, decorations, touches on the buildings, as well as the intricateness of the architecture. It's pretty similar to like the historic town hall we saw earlier in Leuven. Kind of funny to me how Belgium isn't really known for its cuisine, but it, it is, for example, it's sweets and chocolates. Hopefully the corona situation will calm down a little bit soon here in Belgium and I'll be able to go back and explore Brussels some more. I think there's a ton to see in the city and the one day visit really only just scratched the surface. Another weekend I went on a rock climbing trip with LUAC, the climbing group at KU Leuven. Coincidentally, a nuclear power plant was located just across the river from where we were climbing that day. But it was a great chance for me to see Valonia, the French-speaking part of Belgium. I actually didn't expect Belgium to be so beautiful. Um, and I also met a lot of good people, climbed some good rocks. It was a beautiful blue sky, sunny day after having rained for a week. It was great to be outside. I've also been on several bike rides in the past few weeks. Exploring Belgium's more lazy countryside and it's farming. These are some turnips growing in a field <laughs> in Belgium. Fortunately, near a lot of the canals, you have a lot of cycling paths and greenways. The Belgian countryside just has this uniquely tranquil, earthly, olden feel to it. 
Unfortunately, this country has a lot of roads, a lot of cars, and you can't really go a long time without hitting one. Here we have this very cute, uh, historic looking railway station. Now I'm heading south to a forest that's south of Leuven. So the destination of my bike trip today was Meerdalwood, which is a forest around 12 kilometers south of Leuven. Just exploring nature, um, enjoying a Sunday afternoon where it's not raining. <laughs> the way these ferns are turning from green to yellow to brown, covering the forest floor, it's beautiful. Take a moment to look up next time you're in the forest. See the height of the trees, feel small, appreciate the balance of nature, and feel the stress relief. I think especially in autumn, the leaves are changing color, falling, the weather is getting colder. It's a great time just to go out into nature and reflect on the end of a chapter. Okay, that's enough pondering for now. You can also go mushroom picking, but don't pick these. These are poisonous. Overall, my main message is just to get outside, get some fresh air while you still can. Now I'm on my way back home to Leuven down some village roads. Here are some cows on the side of the road. And yay, I've made it back home. This is where I live, the former monastery. We also have a really, really nice garden out in the back. And I feel lucky to have this much space um, right in the middle of town. Are you filming? No, not yet. Maybe that's a little. Yeah, with, with this in the background. Oh, now you're filming. <laughs> good that's enough filming i want to say thank you to all my friends who helped me film this and thank you for watching my life in leuven till next time